I am Marianne Tortorich from New Orleans, Louisiana. Grew up in Lakeview, uh, the fourth ward. Um, we separate our, our certain areas of town, or they're separated by wards here, and uh, people are very proud of the wards that they're from in New Orleans. Um, our, uh, our bounce music, our, our New Orleans rap music that we have, always shouts out to the ward that you're from or the neighborhood you're from, uh, or the street, the name of the street and the neighborhood that you're from. Um, but anyway, I never knew what ward Lakeview was because there aren't very many rappers from, from Lakeview. It's a nice little suburban town in New Orleans. Uh, I grew up here and then graduated high school and immediately moved out of the neighborhood, moved to Canal Street, um, which is a little more culture, culturally significant. Um, I was 18 or 17, and then the hurricane hit that summer, so I moved all over Louisiana, uh, met family that I didn't knew that I had, and went up to Georgia for a little while, where my brother lives, and um, Zachary, Louisiana, and some towns, I don't remember what they're called, and couch surfed and bed surfed, and finally made it back down here, and um, moved uptown, and Magazine Street and some other nice places in the city. And my dad finally rebuilt our house. We got flooded about seven feet of water because the 17th Street Canal broke. And um, he finally convinced me to move back into my childhood home, which I never thought I would do. But he fixed it all up and uh, gave me a whole side to rent out from him with some roommates. So here I am back in the, we call it the luscious Lakeview Lodge. Um, I live with my bandmate, John Arsenault, he uh, plays drums for Sweet Crude, and I play drums for Sweet Crude, and everyone in Sweet Crude plays drums for Sweet Crude. And um, I went off to Austin, Texas for a couple of years to go explore nature and stuff, and it was wonderful. And then uh, I got real homesick and moved back about eight months ago. Started playing with Sweet Crude, uh, a nice little Louisiana French indie rock project hanging out back in my hometown with my family next door, my drummer living with me, all my best friends are still around, and uh, I couldn't be happier. Um, I think for a little while I thought I'd stay in Austin. I was dating someone. And it's so clean and functional and makes sense, and, uh, and then I, I realized that that's why I like New Orleans so much, because it's dirty and doesn't really make any sense, and the streets are really gross, but uh, it's pretty violent. Um, but there's there's some sort of uh, interesting and sometimes sad connection between all of those things and the significant culture. Um, there's something really sad happening in New Orleans right now, which is a pretty intense gentrification process. And I understand the desire to be safe, but um, people are going to realize, and I think they are already, um, that when you start cleaning up the violence, you know, and you target certain types of people, that you're immediately removing the culture. Um, you're removing um, what makes New Orleans New Orleans um, and turning it into something that uh, is desired by old rich white people who moved here <laughs> recently, you know, or whatever, like people that don't really know what New Orleans is about, but see it as a good place to move and a place where they could clean it up and increase the property value and and clean up the bars and the neighborhoods and and uh, make things fancier and it's all good. I'm not, I'm not hating on anyone, but uh, I do have to say that New Orleans is the love of my life and I do get a little defensive when, when those things start to happen and they close down the neighborhood daiquiri shop to open up a fancy hamburger store. And immediately, immediately, the types of people that you see around those places change. And it's not that the people are worse, but the culture is lost. And um, I'm really rooting for New Orleans to, uh, to keep its like dirty self, awesome jazz, bounce, hip hop, um, awesome cultural significance and you know our food and our seafood and our dirty daiquiri shops and and all the things that are just so wonderfully New Orleans um, it's uh, it's challenging because you don't want to live in a city where people get shot outside their houses every day um, but in those same neighborhoods you go see a second line you know like a, a parade, a foot parade with with brass bands, and 
and dancers and children and babies and grandparents and aunts and uncles just having the time of their life. Anyone's welcome. And, you know, I feel like you change those neighborhoods and you're not going to have those events anymore, you know. You're not, Mardi Gras is not going to be the same. Mardi Gras Indians. Uh, I, I was making a joke with someone, like, a very depressing joke about second lines and Mardi Gras Indians and all that. Maybe one day are going to be like sponsored by the city, like put on by people in costumes, like in Metairie or like in some suburban neighborhood, like here in Lakeview. Like, um, you know, they'll like hire people, like African American people to come out in costumes and like pray down the street. And, like, all these tourists will come see it, and, and we were laughing about it, but I'm not so sure it's that far off, you know? Um, so I think I, I'm, I'm looking to, you know, spread awareness, I guess just through, through conversations uh, with my friends, and, and a lot of my friends see what's going on too, and New Orleans is their home too, and, and they certainly don't want it, want it to change. Um, change is all right, you know, the hurricane taught us that that some change can eventually be good, or, or we have to at least accept it and move on. But, but uh, I think the more people are aware of the risk of, of cultural loss that could happen with with some of the stuff going on in New Orleans right now, the the better you know, the more fighting chance we'll have to to keep all the beautiful, unique, dirty, nasty New Orleans <laughs> culture that we have, you know, and. Um, it's a hard balance, you know. I want to buy a house here. I want to live here forever. I want to travel the world, but I'm, I'm looking to buy a home, and um, and I want to buy it in a neighborhood that's a very culturally, uh, you know, steeped neighborhood. Um, maybe not the safest, but but very beautiful. You know, maybe by the fairgrounds where they host jazz fest. Um, they have a nice little Jamaican neighborhood out there that I'm interested in. Um, but I know that a lot of those neighborhoods are shifting. Um, so on one hand, I'm like, oh, it's a great time to buy property because the property value is increasing because we're gentrifying, gentrifying. So I, then I could rent it out and just go travel to South America or something, you know. Um, and then part of me is like, oh man, I really want our streets to be nicer, or I really want our neighborhoods to be safer. Um, so it's really challenging to know how to separate, like to to fix things in a good way, to have people eating like open juice bars and and raw food places and pave our streets and, and clean up our neighborhoods and all this, but how far can you take that without, um, without erasing um, a cultural footprint, you know? Uh, and I think since I got back seven months ago, that's just what, that's been my life. That's been like, because I usually have my little, um, I left it in our sweet crew practice space, but I have a little uh, fleur de lis ring that I wear on my ring finger, and it's, uh, you know, married to my city. And uh, I mean that in a very significant way. That I, um, it's one of the few things I get like passionate about, um, emotionally like triggered, and and um, could cry over. Like I'll cry driving down the neighborhoods and looking at the old houses. Or if someone like says something terrible about New Orleans, I'll cry about that. Or you know, uh, defend it in ways where I normally don't care about politics or or anything like that. I don't. I respect people's opinions, and but New Orleans, I definitely definitely get a little uh, defensive about it. And um, I guess moving away helped me realize that it's uh, it's one of the most, if not the most important thing to me besides my family. You know, New Orleans is, is not just where my family is, but it is my family, you know. I feel more at home here than anywhere in the world. And I haven't done a lot of traveling. I've actually never left the country. Um, I plan to soon, but I feel pretty confident that this will always be like, this will always be my heart and soul. You know, I I know I know it will be. You know, it's like it's like if you're in love with someone and, you know, you you could be together for so long and you never know like what if you find this other person that's even better or like you go to this place and find this person or this other person's more interesting, more beautiful, and you, you could always like fall in love with someone else, but you know somehow you intuitively know in your heart that like. That that's your person, that's your forever friend, you know, and so you're not worried about about it very much, you know. That's how I feel about New Orleans.